One of the things that I've learned as an artist is there's no one path. I know that having to be open to opportunities is a very important part if you want to move forward as an artist. This was kind of like being thrown into the ocean <laughs> with some preservers and other people. You know, I could see I could see the land. So I knew what I was working towards. I really saw it as an opportunity to tap into a lot of my different skill sets. I'm fortunate enough to have had a couple of careers before becoming an artist, and one of them being a project manager. I feel like everything I have done in my adult life has led me to this. I studied textiles, I worked in display and marketing, so I know how to build things, I know how to make things, I know how to problem solve, and then I became a teacher. I know how to engage people with learning, and then I became an artist. So I guess what it boils down to for me is painting black portraiture was in some ways a social experiment. Portraiture as itself as an art form is a challenge to sell. It's not always about selling, but ultimately the, the best affirmation an artist can have is that your work is selling because you won't be able to continue doing the work. So I was fortunate that I had a full-time job as a teacher, which allowed me to enter this form and to continue to do the work that I had because I wasn't dependent on the sales of my artwork in order to survive. I know I came in from a position of privilege in the sense that I was able to do this work and push that agenda because I could also pay my bills. And However, I also know that the work that I've done and the work that's happening in this house will also allow other artists to be able to make those steps as well. And that's what was really important to me about this. As an artist, when I started really focusing on black portraiture and I was being told no all the time, when I wasn't getting gallery representation, when I was being told that my work wouldn't sell, when I wasn't being admitted into certain art exhibitions, I knew that I, this was not acceptable. And so I had to just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And that was what my goal is. So reaching this point right now is a culmination of all that pushing. I think I have an interesting perspective. I think as a gay black man, you feel like you're an outsider. So you don't really feel like you belong to any particular group. A lot of my perspective on this show was looking at it from a way of trying to create something where no one felt like they were an outsider. I never felt that I could be uh, a painter. And one of the main reasons is because I didn't see anybody that looked like me in the drawing and painting section. It just wasn't really an option. And then when I started painting black men or I, I showed some more of my black men in my paintings, that again, that was a thing too. It was a risk. And this is where it's fascinating because as an art student, I would have only been presented with white models. And even as a kid, when I drew superheroes, aside from maybe Black Panther, whose skin you couldn't really see, I drew white superheroes. So my default, when I first started painting portraits, was a white person. And I'm saying that now, and I'm kind of humiliated. I'm a, a little bit embarrassed, but that's the reality, right? That's what I knew. And that's how I was taught to paint. So when I started painting more Black people, and then I had that really positive experience from Black people, I was like, what am I doing? This is an opportunity for me to actually add to the conversation here, to actually really say, why am I at an art fair and there are no black people in any of the booths? Why, are they, why is there no representation? And I was always raised to question, you know, what was going on around me. And I was also raised that if you weren't part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And so I realized I had this opportunity to really start being part of the solution.